One day my friends were sitting there and they're like, do you wanna vape? They showed me how to do it. And I was like, well, does it do anything to me? They're like, no, not really. It's just this juice. It's like a fruity flavor. It started through sports. Personally, I just had friends on the team who had vapes and it was just something we used in the car before games, on the bus. It had a cobra skin pattern. It was red. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. He came around with a bottle of strawberry menthol juice. It tasted like candy. It was exactly what I wanted as a 14-year-old. I ended up vaping with my friends all the time. It just became like a part of my routine. I hit it for the first time, and then I hit it again, and I mean, that was it for me. I remember the first time I tried it, I was in a car, and I took one hit and I coughed a lung out. It hurt. But I do remember getting this like tingling everywhere. I remember that feeling and I remember from that point on wanting that feeling again. For me, it was the feeling of being cool to older kids. I had just gotten into junior high really, so I hadn't become accustomed to the person that I was. I was finding out my identity. It was very easy to get a middle schooler, a fifth grader can get their hands on something because of a family member or a friend. You can walk into a vape shop and very, very clearly not be 18 or older. And they don't care. Even if you look insanely young or the tobacco shops around you don't sell to young people, then you can buy it online. All you have to do is click, yes, I'm 18, and they'll send it to your house. Of course, my whole life I had been raised, you know, cigarettes are awful. You know, that whole movement, our generation was supposed to be the generation that ended smoking. I would talk to people about vaping and be like, oh God, I would never do that. Like, that's disgusting. With a vape in my pocket. It's not like I ever would have been the type to smoke a cigarette. Vaping was just an easy alternative because, you know, it smelled good. Like, it tasted good. A lot of people my age were doing it. It wasn't something weird to do. Well, it's not cigarettes, it's not marijuana, it's not hardcore drugs that I thought was bad. I thought vaping was better than cigarettes and my initial reasoning for that was it didn't have tobacco in it. This is a safer alternative. This is water vapor. When e-cigarettes first came on the market, they were lauded as a safe alternative, that they weren't addictive, that they weren't harmful. Between the marketing tactic and the messaging that it was safe, the, the youth didn't stand a chance. We've worked a lot on the cigarette epidemic and we've worked a lot on people quitting cigarettes, but then you bring up a new device with the same chemicals, but it smells good, tastes good, feels good. And that to me is just proof that you are advertising to kids. You walk into a vape shop and the, there's a wall with everything from tutti frutti to mint explosion. I really liked blueberry and mango. Blue raspberry to strawberry menthol, which was my first. Oh, there's a peak lemonade that I really liked. This actually tastes really good, and it's like, I can handle this, I, I like this. You can't tell me that you're not advertising to kids when you're putting out a flavor that's literally in all kids' candies. The flavoring of vape or e-juice is only appealing to young people, it's not for the older generation, it's not the people that are trying to quit smoking. It's based on trying to get our young people to start vaping. You have an industry that's selling these products as fun, as not an addictive. Most youth think of it as just a fun, easygoing, flavored air, basically. They always tell you that like the tobacco is like very bad because inhaling tobacco is just horrible for your lungs. Teens are masters at rationalizing, so if we can latch onto one thing that discredits it, we will. Oh, my vape doesn't have tobacco. Like, you know, my vape, it's just nicotine and like, 
vapor. Popcorn lung is caused by diacetyl. Now that that's gone, we're safe again. Oh, you know vapes like have a bunch of extra additives, like chemicals that you don't even know about. Oh, but that's only some brands. Like, you know, my brand doesn't. My, my brand doesn't do that. My brand's safe. If we can find any excuse to be like, but this doesn't apply to me, then we're gonna discredit it entirely. Right now what we're seeing is one in four 11th graders in Minnesota using e-cigarettes and more than 10% of eighth graders. And that's a rate that's nearly doubled in the last three years. Kids are vaping in school, out of school, literally everywhere. I don't think there's ever one kid that's never at least tried it in their life right now. In my room, on the bus, in the back seat of my mom's car. I even had a friend who did it in the middle of class. Breathe out here. And it's invisible. And I'll be, you know, buzzed out of my mind in the middle of my eighth grade civics class. Like, <laughs> it's dangerously easy. There are vaping devices that look like an eye watch. There are some that look like highlighters. There are others that look like pens. The idea that an entire industry is creating things that can be hidden from adults <laughs> is so disturbing to me. If you found a pack of cigarettes in your kid's room, you would know exactly what it was. Oh, I think that part of it is that parents don't recognize the products and the products change so quickly. Many students have asked, well, What's worse, smoking a cigarette or vaping? Depending on the device they're using, the nicotine concentration can be much greater than a standard pack of cigarettes. Hitting it once or twice, like, it's not just once or twice. Each Juul Pod is just under one pack of cigarettes, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten packs of cigarettes on this desk right now. I could finish a pod in less than 12 hours. If I was really anxious or if I was like really having a bad day, it'd be like two pods. Comes in packs of four and I do a pack of Juul pods a week, so half a pack a day. Whenever I figured that out, I was like, wow, like I'm smoking a whole pack of cigarettes a day. It's a huge amount of nicotine and it's delivered in a way where you can have continuous puff for dosage. Um, so there's not one cigarette and you're done. We find that kids are using these products continuously. I think that a lot of kids don't want to be vaping. Right now there's such a stigma that like, if you tell your parents you're gonna get in trouble. They're just saying that you shouldn't do it. They're just saying that make kids want to rebel more. They don't even talk about our well-being. Like they're just saying you're in trouble because you're doing it on school grounds. A lot of kids are thinking, this is kind of stupid that you expect me to quit when like you're not even helping me. My parents did find out and it was not something that they supported the act, but they understood that I'm a teenage boy and I'm gonna make mistakes and they're here to support me. There were a firm stance that said, this is not okay and if you're quitting, we are here to support you. Kids are gonna do anything to not get in trouble. And if them telling their parents about this addiction is gonna get them in trouble, they're not gonna do it. I, I don't think any teenager can get through this whole process of quitting without having some guidance of a trusted adult in their life. Quitting nicotine sucks. I was feeling sick, headaches, tired all the time. You're sweaty, you're clammy. Intense, intense, intense anxiety. Withdrawal really, it makes you want to go back. It's hard to focus with your body screaming at you that it needs more nicotine. I went back really quick after I first started to quit. That was definitely like the time that I realized I can't go a day without this. I've actually quit four times now. You know, it feels like this harmless little machine that I've got in my pocket that makes me feel good. But as soon as you have to quit, you realize that it's a lot more sinister than that.
We know that there is a huge health crisis facing our kids and we can't stand by and let it happen. I think we will be decades from now before we really realize the full long-term effects of, of e-cigarettes on the developing body. Legislation is a good first step in terms of limiting the flavors that these devices have, but there are loopholes in legislation, there always are. It's gonna take more than just that to curb the epidemic. It's the same way that the commercial tobacco used to be. Now they got them addicted to vaping and now they think that they'll be able to have a long run with that. Being a teenager is just horrible, but thinking about what I want in my future and like where I want to be 10 years from now and knowing that like vaping wasn't going to be a part of my future. The fact that all this progress I've made, all this pain I've gone through to quit could be reversed in you know a couple hits of a vape. Those fears are there, but I'm confident that with what I've learned and what I've gone through, I'm done for good now. I want to be someone who can make a mark on the world. When I realize, like, I do have a little light in me, I do have something that I can do with my life. Everyone does have a light in them. They just need to figure out what that light is for.